The Roland C-2 was a reconnaissance aircraft built by LFG Roland in 1915 as a new and innovative design. The type would see widespread use by the German Empire thanks to its highly advanced design, becoming the fastest and most maneuverable of its time when it was introduced. Improvements in the overall design were done throughout the war to strengthen its performance. However, by the end of the war, much more advanced designs had been introduced, making the Roland obsolete. The C-2 was relegated to training roles until the end of the war, when all were scrapped. In early 1915, the Luftfahrzeuggesellschaft, also known as Roland to avoid confusion with a similar sounding design firm, began building several Albatross aircraft under license. These aircraft were the Albatross B-1, B-2, and C-1, which were considered some of the most advanced in terms of aerodynamics for the current times. Around the same time, Dip Inc. engineer Tansen would join Roland as chief designer. With Tansen as the chief designer and their experience gained from license building aircraft, Roland would begin designing new and original planes, including the C-2. Work began on the C-2. C-types were two-seat armed aircraft sometime in mid-1915. The C-2 would have a very rounded, aerodynamic fuselage design, similar to the Albatross D-3 fighters that would be introduced in the coming year. The fuselage was created in a unique way called Wickelrumpf, wrapped body. Wickelrumpf involved using layers of veneer strips that were wrapped around a single mold frame. The shells created were then glued together around the wooden frame of the C2 and strengthened with fabric, making a very streamlined and sturdy fuselage. Like the fuselage, the wings were also designed to be very aerodynamic. Instead of having the wings connected with multiple spars and bracings, as was common with aircraft of the time, the wings of the C2 would be connected via a single wooden strut in a single bay wing. Before a prototype was completed, a C2 fuselage was mounted on a rail car for aerodynamic testing and other experiments. The train would swiftly go down a straight track between the cities of Schoneberg and Jotoberg, and data would be collected on the aircraft. The first prototype C2 was completed in October of 1916, and its first test flight would happen between the 24th and 25th. This test flight would end in misfortune, as the D3 engine failed mid-flight, resulting in a crash and subsequent damage to the aircraft. The prototype was quickly repaired and put back into action, with the second prototype completed soon after. In the test flight, it was found that, thanks to its aerodynamic design and powerful D3 engine, the C2 speed was extraordinary, beating out all of the current C-type aircraft that were then in use. With such a feat, a production batch of 50 aircraft were ordered on December 23, 1915. Testing continued and it was found that the wing cells were highly unstable, so an additional drag wire was added. After this change was added to design and prototypes, production of the type continued and by March 7, 1916, the first of the production aircraft were ready to be sent to the front. The Roland C-2 was a two-seat observation biplane. The body of the C-2 was aerodynamic in shape and had a plywood frame, with the outer shell created via Wickelrumpf and made of veneer strips glued together and supported with fabric. The body would have two seats, one for the pilot and one for an observer. On the sides of the fuselage were two pairs of celluloid windows for the observer to use. On several occasions, flight crews would paint curtains onto them. The windows themselves were modified by the crews to open by sliding backwards or downwards, but this was not a standard feature. Above the pilot's position was a roll cage, designed to prevent the pilot from being crushed in the event of a rollover. The initial design of the cage was circular, but once the frontal spandau was added, the cage had to be redesigned and became more triangular in shape. No measure was given to protect the observer. The C2 used a Mercedes D3 engine mounted in the nose and driving a wooden propeller. The first two cylinders were exposed to the elements. The area surrounding the engine was the only part of the aircraft to have metal plating. Certain plates were on hinges to allow for maintenance to the engine. For exhaust, the initial models used the Ocarina style pipes, but later models would change between the Ocarina style and others. The engines would have two rear radiators on each side of the craft. These would go against the aeroflow design and cause drag. 
The tail fins were wooden and fabric covered. The control surfaces were made of steel tubes and covered in fabric. The tail fin was enlarged after the June 1916 batch to increase stability. The wings of the aircraft were made conventionally of wood and covered in fabric, with the control surfaces being made of steel tubes covered in fabric. The ailerons were originally in the lower wing, but starting with the C2A, these would also be located in the upper wing. The wings themselves would have the exact same length, shape, and cord. Unique eye struts connected them together. The eye struts were of plywood construction and would have interior bracings in the shape of an X. The C2 would also have a landing gear connected to the aircraft with V-shaped connectors. At the rear of the aircraft would be a landing skid. For armament, the C2 initially only had a single parabellum 7.92mm for the observer to use. After the first 50 aircraft, a frontal synchronized Spandau 7.92mm was also added for the pilot. If needed, four bomb racks could be fixed to the underside of the wings to carry small bombs. The aircraft also carried several flares. A radio could also be carried on the aircraft and used by the observer. This was powered by an air screw powered dynamo located near the landing gear. The Valfish in Action The Roland C2 arrived on the front line in late March of 1916. The C2s were the fastest aircraft used by the Luftstreitkräfte, German Air Force, at their introduction outpacing all of their operational aircraft and almost all opposing Allied aircraft, only being superseded by a handful of Allied fighters. Because of this impressive speed, the Roland C-2 was flown in special groups, as other two-seater C-type aircraft simply could not keep up with the type. The Roland C-2 was initially used as a reconnaissance airplane, with the second crewman acting as an observer, but its speed allowed it to be used on escort duties as well. Despite its good speed, however, the C-2 was not without its flaws. In the observer role, thanks to the crewman being seated above the body, visibility above the plane was superb. However, visibility in front of the aircraft was lacking, and visibility beneath the aircraft was terrible. An attempt to fix this early on, before production began, was having cutouts in the base of the wings, but this did not mend the problem. This flaw became fatal later on. Once enemy pilots learned of this massive weak spot, as they would now dive beneath a C-2, then fly upwards towards it, firing their guns while the Roland crew had no means of protecting themselves from that angle. This visibility issue also made landings especially dangerous, as the pilot had difficulty calculating how close the ground was. Aircraft at this time were well known to have difficulty landing, but the C-2 suffered worse in this regard than its peers, due to this visibility issue. In addition, the first 50 of these aircraft had a small armament of only the Parabellum machine gun for the observer. Many pilots found this lacking. One pilot in particular, Lt. Otto Chernak of Schusta, H-28, would fix this issue on his own. He would rig a forward firing apparatus from another Parabellum machine gun that would allow the pilot to fire. Due to the propeller and machine gun not being synchronized, the rig placed the gun well above the rotating radius of the propeller, making the rig very tall. Chernak's own plane was modified in other ways as well, having a unique input system for his observer that would allow the second crewman to tell Chernak to move in certain ways. No other C-2 would have this system. After the first 50 aircraft, all C-2s would have a synchronized Spandau machine gun for the pilot. This gave the C-2 some dogfighting ability, which is how it would end up being used for escort duties, along with its excellent speed. At some point, either during its career or while it was still being developed, the C-2 was given the unofficial nickname of Walfish, Whale. The origin of this name has been told many times, but there is no concise point that has been confirmed. The most common of these origins is said to have come from while it was still in development, from a German official observing the type. Another possibility is that its overall round shape and how the early models were painted a silver-white color gave it the name. Nonetheless, the name stuck. The name did not seem to have any negative connotations for its pilots, as many of them would paint fish or shark faces on their aircraft. The aforementioned Otto Chernak would paint a fish face onto his aircraft. This tradition was seen throughout its lifespan even once the two-toned later camouflage models were introduced with green and brown paint. After the initial batch, a 
production of 24 aircraft with a modified machine gun was ordered in March of 1916. Another batch of 45 aircraft were ordered in April. However, the batch of Roland C-2s after this set would aim to fix many of the stability issues found with the aircraft in the field. The tail fin was enlarged to improve flight performance. The wings were shortened and the eye struts were moved inward to compensate for the wing changing. These made the wings much more structurally sound. This reworked design of the C-2 was known as the C-2A, and testing of this design began in April-May 1916. The type would be sent to the front line by the summer. All C-2 aircraft after this point would be of the C-2A model. A batch of 19 C-2As were ordered in April of 1916, and another batch of C-2As were also ordered but with the ailerons in the upper wing. All aircraft after this would have the ailerons this way. A batch of 40 C-2As were additionally ordered in June of 1916, with a larger vertical fin to improve stability. Most of the production's Roland C-2s were flying by the summer of 1916. The C-2 was used extensively at the Battle of the Somme, where it was used in large numbers for recon and escort duties. On the second day of the Battle of the Somme, June 2nd, the soon-to-be-famous Albert Ball would go on a sortie in a Newport Scout aircraft. While flying, his squadron would encounter six Roland C-2s on patrol. The Allied squadron would begin their attack, while the Roland formation would scatter. Ball was able to catch up to one and shoot it down, causing the C-2 to plummet near the Mercatel Aras Road. This would be the first aircraft Ball would completely destroy in flight. Ball himself went on to complement the C-2, stating it was the best aircraft the Germans had at the time, with a good defense to complement its speed. The C-2 was used continually through the rest of 1916. In summer of 1916, the Linke Hoffmann Company would begin license building C-2s. An initial batch of 16 aircraft were ordered. The aircraft built under license were known as the C-2A Li. In July of 1916, a batch of 40 aircraft were ordered to be produced by Linke Hoffmann. This would be the last batch of C-2s built, and they would be sent to the front in the beginning of 1917. By this time, however, the C-2 had lost its edge. The Allies fielded newer and improved aircraft that were easily able to keep up with the C-2, and the Germans themselves had also produced newer aircraft that performed better. The C-2 was instead returned from the front lines and used as a trainer for the C-type in flight schools. The fate of the remaining C-2s is unknown, but they are most likely scrapped. No aircraft survived to this day. In mid-1916, a derivative of the C-2 emerged, the Roland C-3. The C-3 shared many of the same design features as the C-2, such as a two-seat aerodynamic body with two windows on each side for observation purposes. However, most of the similarities stopped there. The C-3 was designed to use the more powerful 200 horsepower Mercedes D4 engine over the C-2's D3. Based on the few pictures available, the prototype C-3 appears to still use a D3 engine, most likely to test the airframe before the larger engine was placed. To compensate for a stronger engine, the wings of the C-2 were made larger. The wings themselves were also reworked. Instead of having single bay wings with flat strut connectors like the C-2, the C-3 instead had the standard two bay wings typical of aircraft of the era. This was most likely done as the single struts of the C-2 happened to obscure the vision of the frontal windows. The tail design of the C-3 also differed from the C-2. Very little is known of the C-3 outside of these few details, including whether or not it even flew or any further testing occurred. The single C-3 prototype was lost when LFG's facility in Altershof was destroyed in a fire on September 6, 1916. This incident is cited to be caused by sabotage from British Special Forces. After the loss of the prototype, no further work on this type was done. The time of its introduction, the C-3 was one of the most advanced aircraft Germany had. Its powerful engine and aerodynamic construction allowed it to outperform most of its opposition. As the war continued, more advanced machines eventually outpaced the Roland C-2. The aircraft did manage to influence other companies attempting more aerodynamic designs. 
Roland would continue building planes, including newer C types such as the C5 and C8, as well as fighter types, both of which would use the Wickelruf. Two other aircraft were built off of the C2's design, the D-1 fighter and the WD floatplane. Despite continuing to make newer aircraft, none of Roland's designs would ever garner the same fate as their Valfish, and it would remain their most iconic design of the war. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscription. You can find more information relating to this vehicle in the full article which is linked in the description. Until next time, keep us in your sights.